Listen to part of a lecture in a geology class. Okay, so it's 10 minutes till the chimes ring. I want to take this moment to say thank you for joining me for the final lecture of Geology 101 this semester. Over this academic term, we've covered a lot of ground. Um, no pun intended. Well, we have literally covered a lot of ground from the Hadean Eon through the Archean and Proterozoic Eons and finally into the Phanerozoic Eon with the Paleozoic, Mesozoic, and Cenozoic eras. Now to conclude, I'd like to touch on a very hot topic in the field of geology. Scientists are discussing, as we speak, whether to define today as a new epoch, which is now referred to as the Anthropocene. Anthropos means human, as in anthropology. Scene is a suffix denoting a new era or period, as in Oligocene. The term Anthropocene was first suggested by Nobel laureate Paul Crutzen to describe the current geological epoch, which is characterized by the dominant influence of human activity on the environment and climate. One of the key markers proposed for identifying the start of the Anthropocene is the global distribution of radioactive isotopes, particularly plutonium, in the geologic record. Now, you may be wondering, what does plutonium have to do with the Anthropocene? Well, plutonium is an artificial element that was first produced and utilized by humans during the mid-20th century, the 1950s to be more precise, primarily through nuclear weapons testing and the development of nuclear power. You may still be wondering, weren't nuclear explosion tests local events? Scientists conducted research worldwide, collecting soil and sediment samples from diverse locations such as a frozen lake in Canada, a cave in Italy, the ocean floor of the Gulf of Mexico, a coast in Australia, a deserted lake in China, and even from the Antarctic region. The analysis consistently revealed traces of plutonium in each and every sample. The presence of plutonium in sediment in ice core samples across the globe is considered a clear sign of human influence. What is worse, further analysis concluded that the plutonium found worldwide came from nuclear weapons testing, not from nuclear power plant accidents such as Chernobyl and Fukushima. In fact, the name plutonium itself is quite indicative as it derives from Pluto, the god of the underworld in Roman mythology. In Greek mythology, Pluto is equivalent to Hades. So in a sense, the very nomenclature surrounding plutonium links it back to the Hadean Eon, the earliest and most inhospitable period of Earth's history before the emergence of life. Ultimately, the debate around the Anthropocene is still ongoing, and there is no consensus yet on when this new epoch should be officially recognized or even if it should be recognized at all. Should we truly be defining our current era in relation to the Hadean Eon, a time when our planet was essentially barren and lifeless? Dinosaurs disappeared because nature selected them for extinction. But should we select ourselves for extinction? Nuclear power is a double-edged sword. Nuclear power generation cannot exist without the risk of accidents. Should we ignore the risk of nuclear power, even though it hangs over us? like the sword of Damocles? Well, it is never my intention to make you feel down before the start of summer vacation, but I encourage you all to continue asking these questions and to keep an open mind as the scientific community grapples with the implications of humanity's ever-growing influence on our planet. I would like to wrap up for the semester with this message. 